everyone, and welcome to this month's Teacher Time. We are excited to have you here with us today. I'm Don Williams. I'm Kristen Ainsley. And we are your hosts for Teacher Time. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed the opening photo loop there. It featured some of the transition uh, pictures of folks doing transition activities that uh, people sent in to us from the last webinar. And when you do that, we have a little gift for you all. So we hope that you guys continue to do that, and we'll do so for today's topic, too. Yes, yeah, so we are live streaming mm -hmm. as we have been for the last couple webinars, which is exciting and, mm -hmm. and scary sometimes, but yes. we're so excited <laughs> um, to be doing teacher times. So let us know on your screen, there's a couple things. You can see a chat box next to you on your screen. If you have any troubleshooting issues or anything on your end, please chat and someone on our end can help you through any of those issues that you may be having. That's right. And also, the Office of Head Start is on Twitter tweeting about teacher time. So you can join the conversation, too, using hashtag NCQTL and let us know how it's going there. Um, we also have a place for you to register your attendance, and that's where it says sign in right underneath our faces where you see us. From there, you can also opt in to join our Teacher Time community and receive email communications from us, such as announcements and follow-up emails. Um, and also, the other link you'll see right below us is, is the evaluation and certificate link. At the, towards the end of the webinar, that link will become active and you can complete an evaluation and tell us how everything went and um, other ideas you might have for other teacher time topics. And then you will be able to choose if you want a certificate of attendance, but we do need you to actually complete the evaluation to get that certificate. And that will be opened up later in the show. So what, <clears throat> excuse me, so what our day is going to look like today is that um, pretty soon, in just a moment, Gail Joseph will join us, mm -hmm. and she's going to be giving a presentation today on emo emotional regulation, helping children calm down after having big feelings, anger, disappointment, um, and some strategies. She's going to share some strategies that teachers can use. Um, we have another segment next that will be called Try It Out, and this segment shows video clips that Don and I will be talking about and sharing with you that shows really amazing uh, strategies that teachers are using in the classrooms mm -hmm. around the country in Head Start classrooms. Mm -hmm. And then we will also share some resources with you, um, like we do on every Teacher Time show, and we'll, the links will show up for those in the chat box, so you can access those that way, and we'll include them in our follow-up as well. And then we'll end with Resiliency and Wellness. I love Resiliency and Wellness. It's a segment where we are trying to focus on some strategies and skills that teachers can use to take care of themselves. Okay, so today our topic, mm -hmm. teaching children how to cope with strong emotions and to focus on ways to help them calm down and to handle these emotions when they arise. And developmentally, we know that three and four-year-olds have strong emotions. Yes, they That's do. their job. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. and, and we all know that, right? And right. it's our job then to help them through those big emotions. So we want to put in um, prevention strategies to support them so it really doesn't interrupt the flow of learning. That's right. So because we have such a, a, a lot of you out there and, and, and it's oh, you know on camera here, we want to connect with you as much as we can. So mm -hmm. we're going to do a poll. We want to know what's happening in your classrooms. So you're going to see the poll come up on your screen. And the poll question you're going to see is, what percentage of your day do you spend dealing with children's strong emotions in your classroom? Is it around 10%, 25%, 50%, or over 75%? Uh, while the poll's going on, you'll hear some music, and when it's over, Gail will be here with us. So it looks like the poll is finished, and it looks like the majority of people, of teachers, of you all are experiencing children having very strong emotions um, around 50% of their day, which, which, is, which is quite a bit. All right, so we are now back with Gail Joseph, and welcome, Gail. Thank you so much for being with us Thank again you, today. What do you think of the results of the poll here? Well, I think I'm not surprised, right? Yeah. So I was a teacher, you were a teacher. I think this is our experience as well. A lot of our time as preschool teachers is helping children to regulate, to kind of scaffold them around those strong emotions. Um, because three and four year olds still need some adult coaching to Absolutely. get through. Um, so I'm not surprised. Yeah. I know that it feels stressful when we experience that high rate, but I'm not surprised. 
Right, okay, good. Well, I am really excited to have Gail here again and, um, today with us because she's gonna be presenting for you all out there directly to the needs that you have as teachers in this area. And we are very excited to hear what you have to say, Gail. Well, I'm so excited. This is a topic I'm really interested in. Um, certainly one that I've had a lot of experience working with young children yeah. um, around. And so I'm happy to share some of this. So I wanted to start and just tell you that there are a couple resources that I'm going to draw from here. So a colleague of mine, Phil Strain, and I have written a couple of pieces that I think are up on the resource links there. And essentially we reviewed social emotional curriculum that had an evidence base. And we looked for and pulled out what are the strategies that can be used to really help young children to cope with, to manage, um, and to express in a healthy way um, things like anger, disappointment, etc. And there are a couple key points that I want to talk about that come from those resources. And then I'm going to move into some practical strategies for you. So one key point to remember when we're thinking about young children and anger and, and um, kind of coping with things like disappointment is that it's OK to feel that way. So when we talk about managing anger or coping with anger, it's not that we think you shouldn't experience that. It's that it's OK to feel that way, but it's not OK to hurt someone. It's not OK to do something that's destructive, um, that would hurt somebody either physically or hurt their emotions in any way. So, um, so it's OK to feel these ways. It's kind of what we do with them that counts. Um, but the other thing that we want to take away from those um, pieces that we wrote is that staying angry, stressed, or disappointed can certainly interfere with our thinking, mm -hmm. with our learning, mm -hmm. and having fun. Right. So staying angry all day long is no fun, right? So, yeah. um, so that's another key message. And then there are some ways, some evidence-based ways to help children manage these strong emotions and to express them in a healthy way. And I'm gonna talk about three um, that we've uncovered Excellent. today. Okay, good. So um, I wanna say that it all begins with emotional literacy. And you had me on a couple months ago where this was the topic. So hopefully people will recall this or remember this. And that is that children really need to know the words for feelings in order to manage them. They need to have that word, um, I understand what that word means, identify when they're feeling that way in order to regulate. Okay. And so teaching children a robust, a, a really large feeling vocabulary is key to this. Now there are a couple of words that we might want to introduce to young children that I think we don't always think about introducing mm. um, because they seem like kind of adult words here. Mm. Um, but teaching young children the words of feeling tense or feeling stressed okay. can be pretty helpful to children because they experience that and they yeah. need the word to, it, to be able to express that. Um, so this is strategy number one, which is this idea of using a relaxation thermometer. And it starts by teaching children this idea of feeling tense or stressed what is it, how does it feel in your body okay. when you feel that way? You know, when I, even when I see these words, I just start to tense up right. and feel that way, right? Your shoulder, shoulder gets tense, your neck gets tense, your jaw gets tense. What makes you feel tense or stressed? Mm -hmm. um, so we talk about those things with young children. And we know that young children in group care situations experience um, high levels of stress. Yeah. So, um, so they feel tense or they feel stressed. So that's something that we want to introduce. Now, oh, whew, when I see much this better. one, I feel much better, yeah. yes, yes, exactly. So feeling relaxed. Um, I like to use the word calm here too because I think young children hear that a lot that you need to calm down but they're not sure what that is or, or how to get there. Right. So feeling relaxed, feeling calm, feeling content. What a desirable feeling state to, <laughs> to have. So we also talk about when this occurs for young children. We mm -hmm. identify times during the day and say, oh wow, you look so content, you look so relaxed. Uh, yeah. um, we set up situations where we can have relaxed moments in our day. So maybe it's turning the lights down a little during mealtime. Maybe it's playing some soothing music. For those of you in full day care, maybe it's um, right before nap time. That's really kind of a relaxed time that we can say, wow, you seem so relaxed so calm no worries um, so that is that magical place that we want to be where thinking and learning and having fun can really happen all right so then how do we get from feeling tense or stressed to feeling relaxed so one of the best ways that we've seen is this idea of using a relaxation thermometer so this has been adapted from a social skills curriculum called the incredible years yeah, by okay. um, dr kellen webster stratton who's just so preeminent in this field um, but many social skills curriculum have 
taken this and adapted this and used it in, in slightly different ways. Okay. So the idea here is that the red moment there, that's mm -hmm. the tense or stress, that's the anger, that's the disappointment, whatever okay. it is where a child or an adult um, could you know kind of lose it if you will right? right that's where it's difficult to think straight that's okay. where it's difficult for us to solve our problems yep. and it's not a very fun place to be you. that's red blue uh, that's where we want to be that's feeling relaxed that's feeling content that's feeling calm for children and then all the colors in between are really all the different emotions we might experience in between going from feeling calm and content to getting really angry and what we want to do for young children is really grow the number of words that they know and young children really like to associate the feeling words with the colors they can get yeah. into that right. um, it works really well for them about feeling in the blue feeling in the green um, those kinds of things so how do we do that how if we're starting to approach that red moment how do we get ourselves back down into that blue so one of the best ways to do that is by taking some deep breaths. Okay. So um, we often say three deep breaths. There's not something magical about the number three. The idea here is that we want children to calm down, to concentrate on their breathing, yeah. to kind of take away, to not be concerned about what they're angry about, what they're worried about, what they're stressed about, but instead to just think about their breath. Okay. Um, we have a way to, to help teach young children how to te take deep breaths because if you tell a four-year-old to take three deep breaths when they're upset, they're going to hyperventilate. Right. So we don't want to do that. Right. So how can we help them? Um, taking a deep breath. Here's a nice visual. So we use this. Smell the flowers. Okay. And then blow out the candle. And that helps young children to understand that it's taking that deep breath in through the nose mm -hmm. and then out through the mouth. And this little mantra of smell the flowers, blow out the candle, can start to take them into their breath and away from what's making them angry or stressed, and pretty soon they're feeling calm. Um, we've even brought little tiny um, you know, flowers out at circle time and little birthday cake candles, um, not lit, okay, so just <laughs> little candles, but just to kind of visualize that for young children, That's something great. that we need to practice when we're calm. It's not something yeah. that you want to pull out as soon as there's a tantrum right. happening, right? Okay. You want to practice this and teach this when they're calm, yep. so it's more likely that they're going to be able to do this when they're feeling upset. Yep. This is just another little thing I brought. Hopefully the camera can pick this up. This is a Hoberman spear. This is another great way to help young children think about visualizing, taking ah. that deep breath, right? So taking it in. Filling your lungs, filling your belly, and breathing it out. Just okay. another strategy I for love that. It. Okay, young children can um, make relaxation thermometers. Mm -hmm. They can um, decorate them. They can talk about how they feel at different times. You can start building their emotional vocabulary in that way as well. What we're going to watch right now is we're going to actually watch a little video where um, this comes from some work that Carolyn Webster Stratton has done as well in a Head Start classroom. Okay. And um, we've worked with this teacher on using the relaxation thermometer with young okay. children. And this is a little boy who feels a little disappointed because he doesn't get a sticker. Now for this little boy, disappointment is the red moment okay. for him. Okay. So let's watch how this teacher uses some emotional coaching and how this child also brings in this new strategy that he's learned at this moment. Okay, good. All right. Congratulations. Keep up the good work. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's go. Let's go. You what? Oh, really? Hurt your feelings? You're feeling a little disappointed? Oh, that's a problem. He's taking a deep breath. Look at Louise. Simran is taking a deep breath because he said he was feeling a little disappointed. That's a great solution. All right. Feeling better? That's great. I'm glad. All right. Ooh, and there's a friend. A friend comes to your rescue. That's great. All right, so I just want to comment on that video for just a moment. So an incredible Head Start teacher yeah. in action there. Yeah. Um, she does a lovely job of really kind of coaching this child through. Um, she, you know, she talks about, um, wow, you were disappointed, huh? She gives him that feeling word for him, and that's really a signal for him to take those deep kind of exaggerated breaths, which is, is really lovely to see, and then the peer comes in to support. She doesn't just hand him a sticker, no. which I think a, a lot of us maybe would have done had right. we not known this other strategy right. to do, right? right? So anyway, so she is wonderful. 
kudos to her. Just great job coaching that little boy through. And now he's got the skill that he can take with him. Yeah. It's excellent. So let's talk it. about two more strategies. I'm going to try and get through two more quick little strategies that we can use to help manage anger and handle disappointment for mm -hmm. young children. Um, so one thing that we want to help young children understand is that when you're feeling really, really, really angry, it's not the time to start solving your problem because anger can actually interfere with your thinking. Okay. It's going to cloud your judgment. Yes. It's going to make you maybe not come up with the best solutions <laughs> right. to get your needs met. Um, another key thing is to recognize anger in yourself and others. So you need okay. to also understand when you're feeling angry, what are those signs? Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I'm going to talk about two techniques. One is called dragon brain and one's called um, the turtle technique um, that we can use to help children manage that. Okay. So just really quickly, this is a little activity that, that also comes from um, Carolyn Webster Stratton's work where it's called feeling fingerprints. And what we've done is we've traced children's bodies and down at the bottom of that screen there, and we've added, you know, they get to decorate them, and then we've had them kind of identify with these stickers. It's mm. probably hard to see, but we've actually given them stickers that say mad or, or anger or whatever. Mm. And we want them to think about on their body, where do they start to feel that? Uh, and kids yeah. are pretty good. They're like, in my jaw, in my, you know, my brow because it gets furrowed, my hands because they start to uh, make fists. But essentially what this is is priming them to understand that, gosh, when I start to feel that way, that's a signal to me yeah. that I should probably calm body. down yeah. before I start to um, solve problems. Another way we've done this for young children is introducing this concept of dragon brain. Okay. Um, so what the heck is this? So dragon brain is this idea, this is the way we can communicate to young children that when you get so angry, kind of like a dragon takes over and the dragons are like, they're big, they're fierce, and the only thing they can do is blow smoke on things, make things kind of worse, right? That's the way that um, the, the kind of the imagery that we bring up there. And that um, dragons have just like these little teeny tiny brains, right? right? So we talk about when you're feeling angry, you might get this dragon brain and you can't think of a lot of good yeah. solutions there. Yeah. So here we just give some visuals. I know you're going to talk about these a little bit later. So something happens, you get angry, you get dragon brain, uh-oh, but then you remember to calm down, flower in <laughs> and, um, and the candle, smelling the flower, blowing out the candle, calming down and now ready to play again. Okay. All right, so that's that. an idea that can help young children understand that idea. And you can use start using that words like, oh gosh, I don't, oh, I'm thinking I'm getting dragon brain. I better calm down first. All right, now I can Model proceed, that. right? Okay, that's great. Okay, one more quick strategy, um, and this is turtle time. Now, I'm guessing that a lot of people know turtle time out there. Um, this is something that is also in a lot of social and emotional mm -hmm. curricula. Um, and this is something that um, is also featured on the Center for Social and Emotional foundations for early learning website and something also in in the resources that we mentioned earlier about the um, helping young children to calm down so turtle technique so really quickly this is the idea um, we have a wise old turtle here who's going to help us with his secret okay. all right okay. and so um, here's our little turtle this is tiny um, you might have another name for him in one classroom I worked in it was Clyde <laughs> Whatever works, right? That. can be Clyde. Um, so step one is something happens, and I'm going to have Tiny actually tell this story. So okay. here's Tiny. Well, you know, I was just having a great time out on the playground. I was playing with my friends. I was feeling great. And then all of a sudden, oh, a ball hit me. Oh, I started to get mad. I was feeling tense and my making fists and my jaw was tense. And... I remembered the wise turtle secret. I thought, stop. And I went into my shell. And I took three deep breaths. And I said to myself, it's OK. Maybe it was an accident. And I can calm down. And when I was feeling calm again, I came out and the light bulb went on and I had lots of solutions. Mm -hmm. So that's Tiny. Thanks, oh, Tiny, thank um, you, for Tiny. coming out. And Tiny um, can really help young children to start to really think about that way. So when we teach young children um, Tiny Turtle, we actually give them some turtle um, things to use. Yeah. So we uh, take some uh, paper bags sometimes and make their own little kind of turtle shells. So here's one that was decorated by a preschooler. And you see that she's copied the, the letters to for the word stop, and that's the hardest thing to do. So we really like to emphasize that. Yeah. Um, she, we get to practice wearing our turtle shells, thinking about things that might make us angry or a time we felt angry, 
and then we go into our shell. Now, when young children first learn this strategy, they're, they are actually going to physically go into their shell, right. and um, that's good, because if yeah. I'm doing this, I'm not right. doing right. this, right? Right, right, right. And so this is a great way to get children to kind of calm themselves mm -hmm. down um, at the beginning, taking those three deep breaths, and emerging ready oh, to solve your problems. So happy. And I know I'm out of time here. I'm just going to end with one little great little thing here. This comes from a classroom where the teacher was working really hard to um, really not only teach and support, but reinforce when children could use turtle power. And that's turtle kind power. of the words she used, mm -hmm. yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. you are strong and powerful when yeah. you can be calm. Yeah. Any old person can hit, kick, whatever, right. but it takes special power to stay calm. And that's what she was able to teach her children. And then what she did, these are little paper turtles with kids' names on them. Every time somebody demonstrated turtle power, she would write their name on a turtle, there'd be a big to-do about it. They'd put it up on the turtle power little um, kind of meter there, and when it got to the top, when they had a full turtle stack, they had a celebration. So lots of fun ways you can think yeah. about reinforcing turtle, turtle technique and turtle power. Um, thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much, Gail. I'm just gonna, we're gonna talk about some of these things. I'm just gonna go through here. So yes, thank you very much. So in a moment, um, Dawn will be back with us as we talk about Try It Out and we're gonna show some emotion coaching video examples. Great. Welcome, Dawn, back with us. We are in our next segment now, which is mm -hmm. called Try It Out. We're gonna show you some videos um, that show teachers using emotion coaching strategies in their classrooms. That's right, so we are gonna show you four video clips. The first set is a, we call it a teacher montage or mashup of teachers actually teaching emotional coaching strategies in the classroom, as Gail was just talking about. You have to take the time to actually teach these things when children are calm. So we have some video examples of that and hopefully there will be some things you see in there that you could try out. And then the next three examples will be some of the emotional coaching strategies in action. So yes, as Don said, the first clip you're going to see three videos strung together, mm -hmm. and these are all strategies that Gail has talked about just a moment ago, strategies that we want to teach children at a calm time mm -hmm. when they mm -hmm. are able to think about what we're saying, we're able to maybe do some role play, mm -hmm. um, and so this is sort of the pre-teaching what we want to have happen in classrooms, mm -hmm. and we're going to show the first video now. And it looks like they're both having strong feelings. Remember when, when you have strong feelings? What do we do? We, we use our calm down rules. We put our hands on our tummy. Let's practice calming down. Put our hands on our tummy. Say stop. stop. And then name your feeling. I'm feeling frustrated. Remember that word? When you have to wait for your turn, or you have to wait to share, you feel, I feel frustrated, or I'm feeling mad, or sad, and then belly breaths. Okay, there you go. Now we're going to zigzag it to the right, to the left, slow, slow like a caracol, like a little tiny snail that goes down. We want to slow down our neurons. See, Good job. I am really mad. Hey, what should Eddie do when he's mad? Do you guys want to give him an idea? Yeah. What, what should he do? <gasps> right. Hey, Eddie, check out Marilyn. She's breathing kind of fast, but she's breathing. <gasps> okay, I think I'm ready. So in this clip, you saw three different um, examples of teachers uh, showing different ways that children can, teaching children to calm down strategies. So in that first one, you saw the teacher um, reviewing some different strategies. She talked about belly breathing, and so the children could say how that they were feeling, so they can refer to it in the moment, so they have a visual reminder for that. Mm -hmm. um, then there's also the practice of breathing and stretching and relaxation. Mm -hmm. I would stretching. like to relax like a snail right now. That. that would be lovely to be able to do that. that. And once that's practiced, 
practice, it provides children with some tools to try to calm down. So maybe they will remember breathing. Maybe they will remember to stretch and take a break like that. Yeah. And then you saw the puppet, which we saw Gail demonstrate beautifully. I know, I that. was that. fantastic. Um, but you know, one of the benefits of using a puppet is that sometimes big, strong emotions can be easier to demonstrate with a puppet instead of having a child do some of that. Right, right. So um, now you've seen two great examples of how to do that. Excellent. So the next clip you're going to see is um, does not have any audio with it. So don't worry that your computer's something went wrong. Mm -hmm. um, we're just going to see the technique that Gail talked about of smelling the flower and blowing out the candle. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that it's pretty clear that this teacher has already taught this little boy how to use this strategy, and she's just supporting him in this strategy. There was something that happened in an activity. He went to take a break with the teacher, and then he gets to go back to the class after doing the breathing. Mm -hmm. So here was the smell of the flower, blow out the candle, calming down strategy in action. So it's clear that this little boy has been taught the strategy before and the teacher is helping him to recall it. And you see how he can successfully rejoin the group after that. So it's nice to see how in the midst of everything that's going on in yeah. the classroom, this you know, can be pulled off. Absolutely. So the next clip you're going to see is a, a teacher who's using some visual supports to mm -hmm. help a little boy. And this is an outside activity. The little boy, again, has, has something has happened. The little boy has left the activity. The teacher is going to use some visual supports from Cephal um, to help him talk through his emotions and try to sort of get to the bottom of what happened with him. Mm -hmm. There were lots of rocks, yeah. How is Robbie feeling now? Uh, icky. Oh my goodness, are you mad or happy? Mad. Mad, what are you mad about? you mad when you get home and something about that. Good way. We're working in using words and I like how you communicate in that. So there are a number of great things that this teacher is doing. She's building on the child's emotional literacy. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things that Gail pointed out in her presentation was that strong emotions can interfere with your with thinking clearly, and the teacher recognizes that. Yeah. It's really hard to think clearly when you're upset. Right. And so using a visual can help facilitate the, the child's expression of that emotion a little bit more easily. And then also having these visuals can help with children who might have a speech and language disorder. Mm -hmm. um, because it, did, it provides them with a tool to communicate where and it might just make it a little bit easier to do that. Absolutely. Okay, our last clip that we're gonna show today um, is our big finale here, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a teacher and a child. The little boy is, is quite upset at snack time, which this will be no surprise to you. This happens all the time all in the time. classrooms. And what we really love is how hard um, the teacher works and the child. The teacher has a, various strategies that he's gonna use with this little boy to help him in this moment and help him to calm down. Mm -hmm. You can, you, can, you can use a calm voice and say, please stop. Please stop. 
So, you know, as you mentioned, one of the things I love about this clip is how hard the teacher and the little boy are trying. And, you know, here at QTL, we just can't thank all the teachers who've allowed us to come into their classrooms um, and film this. And there are so many shining examples of teachers using great strategies, and all of these clips reflect that. So this child is clearly upset, and he is doing his best to stay calm um, while he's saying, I need help, I need help. Yeah. Like Someone has been working with him on that. Yeah. And the teacher stays calm through the whole thing and has a social story to talk through. Yeah, and it, he really has three things, really, mm -hmm. that he talks to him about. He uses a visual support. It's called a social story, a little social story, a story about what Andy can do. Mm -hmm. He does modeling deep breathing for Andy at the snack table, and he also gives him words to say, please right. stop, right. Yeah. right? So instead of maybe a month ago, the little boy might have gotten up from the snack table. Now he's in his seat, he's mm -hmm. using strategies, and he's, he's able to continue on with the activity. Okay, so hopefully there were some new ideas or strategies you got out of that try it out section. What we're trying to do there is give you things you could do the next time you have the opportunity in the classroom. Okay, and now we're going to transition to sharing some resources with you. And we know as we were um, going through the presentation, you might have seen a few of those. Um, but they are from the Head Start Center for Inclusion, um, the Center for Social Emotional Foundations and Early Learning, and NCQTL. So this, rough, this resource right here, and you have had the links come up in your chat, um, and we will also send all of this in a follow-up document, so don't worry if you're not copying it down um, yeah. right at the moment. But Head Start Center for Inclusion has many, many visuals mm -hmm. to use to just download, to use in your classroom. This is, again, the Dragon Brain story. You can have it large, you can have it small, you can send it home with children. It also has some really great, great photos, and are, are, sorry, drawings mm -hmm. of ideas that children can use when they're feeling these big, strong emotions, right? So they can bounce a ball, they can blow bubbles. Sometimes children forget what they can do. So posting these in the classroom is a really great way to remind them. And then on Seffel's website is the turtle technique. And so there's some visuals and some actual directions for how you can use that in your classroom. And then we also, this is the house, it's the NCQTL Framework for Effective Practice, and not all of the resources we have here at QTL are up on the ECLKC yet. Some of them are available, well, all the rest of them are available in the Foundations and Service Box set. Now, this is available to all the grantees, and you get it through your EC specialists. And there's three suites in particular that relate to what we're talking about here today in the Building Relationships section. It's fostering connections, being aware of children's needs, and creating a caring classroom community you might find particularly helpful. Excellent. All right, so we are going to take a short break with another poll. If we want to find out if you're watching in a group, how many people are watching with you, it really helps us to figure out who's out there in our Teacherland audience. And when we come back, Gail and I will return. Hi, Gail. Hi. <laughs> it is resiliency and wellness time. I love this segment. I feel like I should be laying down on a couch or something. I just, I, this is such a great idea you had for this segment every time because we get to tell teachers something that they can do to take care of themselves and focus on that to try and you know, make things a little bit easier in their lives. Well, we have seen examples of incredible teachers. We have a lot of incredible teachers that are tuning in right now. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, we need something to help them as well, That's right? right? So it's hard work that we do and we're teachers. And so resiliency and wellness, we're learning more and more all the time about the connection between our own resiliency and wellness and our ability to effectively teach mm -hmm. and to help young children with their social and emotional development. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to um, introduce a new kind of idea for us here, okay. and that is um, this strategy of identifying or being mindful of when we're having some unhelpful thoughts hmm. um, and spin <laughs> them to make them more positive and helpful. Okay. So we think all the time. We just like, you know, get caught in these thought storms. We're thinking, thinking, thinking. Okay. And so what I'm going to encourage us to do is to stop once in a while okay. and to be mindful of how we're thinking about a situation. And if that thinking is something that is positive and helpful and going to help us to reach our goals, to proceed positively, to feel good and relaxed, or if it's actually unhelpful and perhaps stopping mm. our ability to reach our goal or to proceed positively. Okay. So, um, so the big key message here is that thoughts, feelings, and the way we act are all connected okay. um, very intimately. It's kind of this cycle that happens. Mm -hmm. And the way that we're going to think about a situation, so remember we're thinking all the time. Right. We want to be mindful of how we're thinking about that situation because the way we think about it 
can affect the way we feel about it. Mm -hmm. And the way we feel about it, again, affects our thinking, which then affects our behavior. Okay. It's all connected. Right. And so where it starts is that thinking about the situation. So it's being mindful about those thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I like to think about this, I borrowed this from um, some other scholars in resiliency, where they think about kind of red light thoughts and green light thoughts. And okay. this has helped me a lot, so I thought I would share it. Great. So red light thoughts are those thoughts that are going to start, um, are, that we're going to notice are unhelpful, maybe negative thoughts mm -hmm. that are going to affect the way we feel about the situation and affect the way that we behave. Okay. Um, and that perhaps are not the ways that are going to help us proceed positively or meet our goals. Um, green thoughts are going to be more helpful. Okay. They're going to affect us the way that we're feeling um, in a more positive way and you'll see that we can proceed more positively. I'm gonna actually put up a situation here just as an illustration. Um, this doesn't maybe necessarily have something directly to do with teaching, but we all know from teaching that things outside in our lives really w can affect the way that we're, um, how we're behaving in the classroom, Absolutely. if you will. So here's a situation um, that I know I'm very familiar with that can be a really stressful one. So you're trying to save money, you have this goal to save money, that's your goal, mm -hmm. um, and you manage to save just a little, but all of a sudden you got this big pill, this big bill to pay that you forgot about. Um, and so if I have some red light thinking here, my thinking might be, well, this is hopeless, right? Mm -hmm. I'm never going to save any money. I mean, you know, I just got some and there it goes. It's going right. to be awful. Clearly, if I'm thinking that way, I'm going to feel sad and maybe even some depressed mm -hmm. about that. And how am I going to behave? Probably just give up. Saving's not for me. It's not going to work, right? And right. I'm going to continue this cycle of feeling stressed. Let's change to our green light thinking, right? I'm going to be mindful and think, wow, that's not very helpful. Let's get a green light thought here. Green light thought might be, hey, it's a little setback. I can be a little bit more aware of this. I can figure out how I forgot it, but it's a little setback. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean it's not, it's not the end. Mm -hmm. And then how am I going to feel about that? I'm going to feel okay and hopeful about the future. Mm -hmm. Very different than feeling sad and depressed. And then I'm going to... Um, uh, behave in a way that's going to help me to think about how I can work th work through this and work it out, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, another green light thought might be, thank goodness I saved a little money for this bill. That's right. right. That's <laughs> another way to think True. about it. Okay, so let's think about something that might be even um, more familiar to us, um, which is you just received some feedback from your supervisor after maybe you had a class observation mm -hmm. done, and um, and the message that you get is that you've you know there's some improvement needed. That happens. All right, happens a lot. Yeah. So let's check in with how we're thinking about it. So a red light thought might be, well, I think this means I'm not a good teacher. Might be a red light thought, right? Yeah. That's gonna stop us um, from proceeding positively because it's gonna make us feel maybe a little ashamed and worried. Mm -hmm. um, and the way we might behave in that situation is, hey, I'm not gonna try very hard. What's the point? Right. right. I'm not. I'm you know just not a good teacher. Mm -hmm. um, so let's change that. So I'm mindful. I just get this feedback. I'm mindful that ah, I'm starting to have some red light thoughts here. What can I do? I can spin it to be a green light thought, which is, hey. I demonstrated some strengths in there. Yeah. I know I love teaching and I've got some areas to grow. Mm -hmm. How might I feel about that? Well, I'm going to maybe still feel a little disappointed to be realistic, but I'm also going to think, hey, I feel inspired to improve my teaching because okay. I know I can do it. I have some strengths. I love to do this work and I can get better. Mm -hmm. And then how am I going to behave? I'm going to ask my supervisor how I can improve um, and how they can help me with that. Okay. Um, so again, that just checking in, gosh, is it, am I having some red light thinking here or some green light thinking mm -hmm. here? And I think if we all start thinking this way, we can help each other out. So, you know, you hear That's me true. complaining or something, you can say, well, it sounds, seems like some kind of red light thinking going on there. Let's spin it to be green light thinking. Um, so it's just something to help us be mindful. And the great thing is that there's traffic lights all over the place. <laughs> um, and so that's always just a reminder. Hey, let me check in with how I'm thinking about it. Something to practice and when we're calm um, and more likely to come to us when we're feeling upset. Oh, gosh, that's so helpful. Because thinking, feeling, and behaving is all, are all things that we can control. Yeah, and right. we can do something about it and help each other with some more green thoughts. That's right. <laughs> that's right. All right. Thank you, Gail, for that. Thanks and so much. I'm sure that you all definitely got something from that. And um, Kristen's going to be back with me in just a moment for some closing thoughts. All right. So this brings us to the end of our time today. Um, we've got just a few reminders for you. Uh, we uh, join us next month on February 21st for our next Teacher Time Show. 
Um, and also, we really would love to hear from you all about um, you know, any activities or photos you might have of um, doing calming down strategies or pictures of children doing that or ideas you use in your classroom to help children calm down from their strong emotions. So please send those in to us to ncqtl at uw.edu. And we love to feature the good work that we know that's going on out there. And when you do, we'll have a little gift for you. Yes, we, we will rave about you, we promise. We, we really <laughs> want to know what's happening in your classroom. So you may also join us on Twitter, NCQTL, mm -hmm. the hashtag NCQTL. You can tweet about what's happening and what you see here going on and what's coming up. Um, and please also remember to sign in if you have not signed in yet. Mm -hmm. Um, that will be, there is an evaluation form and a certificate that you will receive, but every single person needs to sign in and, and fill out the evaluation in order to get their certificate. We were noticing on here how many people are watching together and we love that. Yeah. Um, but the, the evaluation and the sign in will be open for another hour, so mm -hmm. you will have plenty of time for everyone to fill that out. We know you want to get your certificates and follow up. And don't worry if you missed anything, you were frantically taking notes, we'll be sending out a follow-up doc document that summarizes what we covered today and we'll also include all the resources. Uh, so thanks for joining us. Thank you everyone. We'll see you next month.